Hello, if you're new here, I'm Aramis. And I'm Emily. And over the past year, we've converted this old panel van into our weekend getaway camper van and called her Flossie. Flossie is a 2001 Mark VI medium wheelbase Ford Transit. And let's just say, she wasn't in the best shape when we got her. In this video, we're going to show you the entire transformation from the very first step to the final result. This was a budget build, and if you stick around to the end of the video, we will show you exactly how much this conversion cost. So, let's dive into the build. As we mentioned earlier, Flossie wasn't in the best shape when we got her. We thought the mechanical issues would be an easy fix, but it turned out to be a full engine teardown and rebuild. Once we had the engine running smoothly, we started by stripping out all the old plywood and removing the bulkhead. That's when we hit our next surprise, rust. We have some, we have a few holes. After pulling up the plywood, we found major rust spots, especially around the wheel arches. So before we could continue with the conversion, we had to deal with that first. Once the welding was done and the entire floor was under sealed, we could finally get back to the build. With the rust sorted, we cleaned the inside and treated the remaining rust spots. Our first big challenge was the subfloor. We laid wooden battens and used 25mm Celotex for insulation. Once everything was in place and taped down with aluminium tape, it was time to cover it all with 12mm plywood and glue down the vinyl flooring. And just like that, we had the floor done. With the floor done, our next big task was insulating the walls and the ceiling. We used a mix of materials, more Celotex, recycled plastic thermal fleece, and 5mm adhesive closed cell foam insulation. Before getting to the insulation, we applied sound deadening sheets to reduce the tin can noise you usually get in the back of a van. For the ceiling, we used the same thickness of Celotex as we did for the floor. To keep it all secure, we used insulation stick pins, which helped keep the panels in place while we worked. Once the ceiling insulation was up, we cut out a hole for our budget fan and solar panel. We even left some extra space in case we decided to add another solar panel later on. With that job done, we moved on to running conduits for the solar wiring and other electricals. Then it was time to cover the rest of the walls with adhesive closed cell foam. A few weekends later, the van was starting to look a bit like a spaceship, but all the insulation was finally done. We used spray adhesive to stick the fleece to the walls and since we had some leftover Celotex, we decided to use that on the larger panels for extra insulation. The final bit of insulation was for the overhead cabinets. Once that was sorted, we were officially done with the insulation and ready to cover everything with plywood. But before we could install the plywood, we needed to build the frame in, so we'd have something to screw the ply onto. Piece by piece, we got one of the walls done. But before moving on to the other side, we realised it would be easier to carpet the wheel arches whilst the plywood was still off. Carpeting was pretty new for us, so we weren't sure how it would turn out, but actually, in the end, we were pretty happy with it. With the arches done, we moved on to the other wall. We decided to only cover the left half of plywood, leaving the space above the sliding door to be covered with the same carpet we used on the arches and the door beams. Once we got more comfortable with the carpeting, we tackled the overhead shelf. Whilst Aramis worked on that, I started painting the walls white, giving the inside a fresh, clean look. Painting done, the van was really starting to come together. Next up was the sliding door. We carpeted the bottom half and used a temporary sheet of plywood at the top whilst we figure out what to do with the window. Now, with only the ceiling and rear doors left, we decided to get creative and make a deck style ceiling using 9mm plywood slats. We stained them with dark oak to give them a nice finish. While the slats were drying, we tackled the rear doors, adding the carpet completely transformed the back of the van. Once the carpet was done, we moved on to the ceiling. The slats turned out exactly how we wanted, so we started installing them, carefully spacing each one. After a few slats, we finally found our rhythm, and before we knew it, voila, the ceiling was complete. Now for the fun part, designing the layout and starting to build the furniture. We decided to go with a U-shaped seating area that converts into a pull-out bed, rather than a fixed one, to maximise space and give us more room for seating. Building the bench frame was straightforward, but the tricky part was figuring out how to make the bed pull out while still being able to lift it for storage underneath. Since we've never done anything like this before, it took us a lot of brainstorming and research, but we finally got it to work, and the bench and bed were finally fully functional. Once the bed design was sorted, we covered the bench with plywood and things really started to take shape. 
To finish the bench, we added two sliding doors for storage access from the back and left space on the right side for a big pull-out drawer that would serve as an outdoor kitchen. With that almost done, we moved on to the kitchen unit. We used the same 24mm plywood as we did for the bench tops and for the drawers, we lucked out and were given leftover chipboard. This is also when we decided on the colour scheme. We painted the bench and the kitchen drawers to match and for the worktop, we built our own DIY countertop for wooden planks. We stained the countertop with dark oak stain and added a few coats of varnish to seal it in. Once the drawers were in and the handles were fixed, the kitchen unit was nearly complete. Since space in our van is limited, we decided to undermount the sink and add a lid to maximise worktop space. For the plumbing, we kept it simple. Two 25 litre bottles, one for fresh water and one for grey water, plus a 12 volt water tap. Kitchen finished, the van was really starting to feel like a proper camper. Next, we boxed in the overhead shelf, using a cardboard template to cut out 9mm plywood for the doors and with that, we moved on to the overhead cabinets. Building the cabinets took a lot of measuring, but we framed them with wooden battens, boxed them with 5.5mm plywood and attached them to the ceiling battens. We finished them off with matching doors and handles. And just like that, another big job was ticked off the list. Now it was time to figure out the cushions for our bench and bed. Ordering custom cushions was way out of our budget, so we decided to make them ourselves using foam, a handheld sewing machine and some teddy fleece bedding. It was our first time doing anything like this, but it turned out pretty good. At this point we started adding some finishing touches. One of the first things was kitchen tiles over the unit, which was simple but an effective upgrade. To make the van feel super cosy, we installed an AC plug over the kitchen and added LED lights under the cabinets and kick plates. We loved the warm light so much we added more around the bench area which completely transformed the calm vibe. With just a few final jobs left, we installed curtains to separate the cab from the living space. We used blackout material attached with velcro strips so they're easy to remove when needed. For the toilet, we decided to go with a composting setup instead of a chemical one. We bought a urine separator, toilet lid and container and then customised the bench box to fit everything inside. After a lot of cutting and measuring, the composting toilet was done and with that we were pretty much finished with the build. And of course there are still a few jobs left, but apart from that the van is fully usable and ready for some adventures. So. The last seven minutes that you just watched was an entire year of building this van. A very long time. A very long time. Worth it, but we just thought this was a really nice way to show you the build from start to finish without it taking forever. Obviously, if you're interested and you want to see the whole process, there's 17 episodes actually. Yeah. yeah. So you can go back and watch them. The van included all, and all of the supplies for this build we spent a total of £4,565 and 1100 of that was the van itself so yeah. taking that off about three three and a half thousand in about a year so yeah we really hope you enjoyed this slightly different video from us and we will see you next time we're probably gonna split have a couple of trips but we're gonna get back on the build yeah see you next time Bye. Bye.